Why did you start laughing? Yeah, I I know, but I'm concentrating on you because I can't say things normally until you shut your noise. Can you just look over there or something? Right, I'm ready. Is it rolling? Yes. Right, okay. Hi everybody and welcome back to How Hard Can It Be? I'm Phil Murphy. This is a Nauticus 27 foot. Down there is, of course, the blue missile, which we still need some more information on. But we won't get into that. We're going to deal with what I've done uh, in the last episode and the beginning of this episode. So it's been, it's Monday. So Friday of last week was the last point when I did the uh, final bit of painting. So it's hard enough now for me to uh, flat it off with wet and dry in a very very fine paper i need to go to an auto shop and get some 1200 or 8 1600 or 1800 grade so i just want to take the nibs off the paint and see whether i can get some of these brush strokes that you can see here lose a bit of that and then once we've got rid of that i can then use some g3 compound which is like an auto paste with my um uh, body mop uh, and then buff it all up and hopefully we shall have a really nice finish so while I get myself out of this boat John is going to show you what I have done over the last week which episode is this 27 it is 27 did I say 26 what's it called I don't know. How hard can it be? I did do that bit, how hard can it be? I said that at the very beginning. Okay. Welcome to how hard can it be? You watch the footage and I get, I'm telling you, it was bloody right. Get God, the he's boat. been off and he's come back and his dictatorship is unbelievable. Just get on with that. Unbelievable. So, what do you think? It's looking good, isn't it? Just missing one little thing though, isn't it? Been waiting to do this for ages. Obviously it's not bolted down, but you get the picture. Look at that. You could eat your dinner off that. With a bit of chrome work on there and the uh, the light and the horn and everything else that goes on with it i think it'll look good i did make the decision of painting the air vents the same color as the roof because they are plastic and i thought it'd be nice just to lose everything there was a comment i think it was jason that said and a valid point too what was the reason for me that's not fitted right there we are uh, what was the reason for uh, choosing these colours rather than going with the correct colours, which was a light blue on the middle section uh, with a white roof and a uh, white hull? The reason for that is because I couldn't get an exact match on the original colour. And if it wasn't going to be exact, I wanted to steer well, well away from it. And I'm pleased that I have because I'm chuffed with this colour. It's not cream, it looks cream, but it's actually officially called ivory. So um, there we go. So yes, I'm happy with that. And I think once this is all, all this bright work is cleaned up, stainless steel, so uh, um, a bit of wire wool will bring this up. And then once the windscreen is up, etc., it's starting to look like a boat again. So all we've got to do with this paint really now is to, um, as I said to you, flat it all off uh, and then give it a quick buff and then hopefully 
that'll seal the top uh, for many a year to come and I'm hoping that uh, it'll stay shiny. I am going to keep this like this, I'm going to maintain it as it is, I'm going to treat it like a car, I'm going to polish it etc, give it a wash every so often so then it prevents the sun because obviously a lot of boats that you see out there have got a lot of faded paint. This boat before it was painted was really badly pa uh, faded so I'm going to keep on top of it and uh, keep it shiny so then the water, the rain etc beads off it and then it, it stays hopefully Obviously, it's not going to stay like this forever, but it's going to stay better for longer. So there we go. So far, so good. When you're ready, we're rolling. Yes, 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 all right. I needed me Sharpie. Impatient. Welcome back, everybody. So, we have a plain bit of paper, and I'm going to demonstrate to you, this is not a lesson, by the way, and all the people that can spray cars and can do spray jobs, you know the dance. But to the people that don't know the dance, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Because I've thought about the methods and everything else to go with it. So I think I have got three options. Option one, option two, and option three. Now, when you paint a car, you get orange peel. This is no different. The only difference is, is that the orange peel is basically like a ploughed field because you roll it on and then you tip it off. And when you tip it off, you end up with minute brush lines going in one direction. So, I shall try and draw a ploughed field. Okay, so we'll do three ploughed fields. Ah, you didn't think I'd do that though, did you? Hey? No, I must admit. Bit of skill, bit of skill. Right, so, one ploughed field. The return of Michelangelo. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. With the odd nip and rubbish on the top, which happens to be dirt, things that have dropped from the ceiling while it's been setting. So, why have I done three sessions? Well, the first one is quite simply, we can eliminate those and leave that. So in order to do that, you would use 2000 grade paper. 2000 grade paper will literally just take those nibs off. Might take a little bit of the orange peel, the severe bits off as well. Or method two, you could use 1500 and then 2000. Now, it's the naught. So, 1500 would take off the nibs and take off probably half, maybe a quarter, maybe a half of the orange peel. Third, we could use 1000, 1500 and 2000. We could eliminate all the orange peel and literally leave a block of paint. Now, if I wanted to do that, I'd have to go with at least three coats. At the moment, I have done two layers of paint. I'd need to do three with that. And the reason for that is because I'm gonna be cutting pretty deep because at the end of the day, it, is been, it has been put on with a brush. I'm not gonna do that because it means doing the whole boat. Now, yes, I have flatted that off to a certain degree and I am going to repaint this, but I've decided that I'm going to go with method two. And that is, 
I'm going to use 1500s and then I'm going to use 2000s just to take a bit of it off because at the end of the day this is a fiberglass boat it's been out it's been on the water for many a year it's got the odd divot and it's got you know scrapes and what have you and it's wavy as well and I think if I just do that method, which isn't a hardship to be honest, it's not a, I mean, I've, I've already done 15 and, two th uh, and uh, 2000 up there already, uh, and we're on the buffing stage, which you're going to see. Uh, so that's taken me, say, what time is it now? Two, two o'clock ish, half past two? 2.30. Two 2.30, so it's taken me about three hours to completely do the upper section. So no hardship. Would it take me half an hour, maybe an hour to do that section? To be honest, take me forever to do that. So that's the method we're going to do. So I hope that's explained everything. So should we go aboard? I think so. Okay, so we're back on top of the boat. So as you can see, this is your ploughed field, uh, field effect. And as you can see, you can see uh, sort of a stripe and you can see gloss. So where your undulations were, you've got your gloss, uh, you've got your gloss, and then on the tops, you've got sort of a matte finish. So that so far is the effect. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some compound, which is G3. There we go, G3. That is a cutting compound. So I'm gonna use that on, on a uh, buff, I'm gonna use my buffer and then I'm going to squirt some of this on top of the foam uh, top and then we're going to compound it. But we're going to compound that side first. So that's where, that's the effect which is all over. So we're going to now polish most of this out. So hopefully it will, I mean the, it, the striping st will still be there but it won't be as apparent, he says. So, I'm going to concentrate here, John, okay? Okay. So, so this is my machine. So, what we do, just put a bit of water, just acts as a bit of a lubricant. A bit of this G3 on there, like so. Speed-wise, this is obviously a multi-speed. I'm going on position four, which is roughly about, I'd say about 1500 revs, and then you take it up to 800 revs. So you start slow to start with, just to get the compound moved around on the area that you're doing. Because if you go straight in at 800 or too fast, it splatters everywhere and it doesn't do the job. So we put it on a low speed to start with. Right, we just dab it all over the areas that we're going to do and then we start on three I think. So we're just getting the compound into the areas that we're doing. And then we pick up the speed. use a cloth and I don't know whether that picks it up. You just come this way a bit, like a little flat. Wow. Yeah, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. So you've got your gloss back, as you can see. You sort of eliminated quite a lot of the uh, the striping 
and what you're trying to uh, what you're trying to achieve, or what I'm thinking I should should try and achieve, is to make it look like it's a gel coat when it came out the factory, because obviously it's it's fiberglass. They weren't perfect, uh, and that there I think is a. Uh, it's actually quite a nice finish that. You can still st see stripe in there. Uh, it's obviously gone there because it's on the round. Um, but that, if I can get that finish all the way across the boat, I'd be uh, extremely happy with that. So that's what we're trying to achieve. You can see it there. That's what we've started with. And that is what we're going to hopefully end up with. So I shall get cracking. And you shall come back when I've done it. See you later. Okay, as you can see, we are now buffed. We've used two grades of paper and we've ended up with what you see here. It's three months down the line. I have had a, uh, I've been able to do this particular treatment because I've had three months off. I have had a knee issue. Uh, which is uh, obviously not, I've not been able to get up and down the ladder. So with that being the case, I've been able to come back and buff it. The paint has been extremely hard, uh, which has created an even better finish than I anticipated. And as you can see, there should be a light reflection, a square light reflection somewhere over this section here. And you can see it's a, uh, it's a really good finish. So I'm sorry that <laughs> you've not seen me for uh, three months, but um, the good side, the flip side, is that we've managed to get this um, finished. So let's crack on, let's get down there. We'll start discussing some of the uh, lighting that we need to start putting on here. And of course, we've got the windshield that needs to go up. Uh, and I think that should be done in the next episode. So let's go downstairs and carry on. And it's now time to start putting uh, the hatch up, the windscreen, that's got to go up. And of course, all the chrome work on the sides because they've all had equal amount of paint, which is now three coats. And we're all ready to start putting things like this on the boat. I've received my Clayton Wright uh, window um, gasket set, uh, which is good. However, it's not the right one. And the reason, why, reason being it's not the right one is because the gap between this point here, where that slots into the fiberglass, won't take the ply that's going to sit on the inside of the boat. So that is too narrow. So I'm afraid everything that's down below, which you can't see, or John will, maybe pan into all that down there. I've got to now change that uh, and get a slightly wider one. In fact, I've got to get a six mil fully enough because the ply is slightly thicker. Uh, I thought they asked for six mil. I, don't, I still don't know the reason why I've got a two mil, but that's what we've ended up with. Anyway, that's going to set me back a little tad, but not to worry. We've still got quite a bit of chrome work that we can put on. I also want to finalize finishing the bottom section off because we're now into September and the weather may turn and we need to get the final lots of coats on here. So then when we enter the uh, winter, uh, we don't need to do any more painting on the outside, he says, but there we go. So. I can't think of anything else that I can say about this episode, do you, John? No. Other than the fact that we need to just crack on. And I think what we'll do is, rather than start the chrome work now and tagging it on to the end of this episode, we'll finish this one now, and then we'll have a fresh episode where we start putting all the trinkets on, etc., and wiring it all up. So thank you for your patience. I appreciate uh, the new subscribers that's been along. Uh, we have some good news about the uh, blue missile over there and I'll explain that in the next episode. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next episode. Bye for now.